My name is Matt Thompson. I'm Group Manager for Water and Environment at uh, WSP, Opus, and um, it's a large global consultancy. Uh, 43,000 staff around the world and uh, 550 officers across 40 countries. My name is Ang and I'm the CEO of Stratfit and we work for ourselves. I'm Alison Andrew, I'm the Chief Executive of Transpower New Zealand. My name is Rhys Moores, uh, I hail from uh, Ngāti Mahuta uh, in Tainui and Ngāti Pikeo Ngāti Whakaue in Te Arawa. I am the Manager of Program Office and Strategic Relationships at the Science for Technological Innovation National Science Challenge and we're based uh, in Wellington, principally uh, in, in Lower Hutt. My name's Dean Kimpton. I'm currently Chief Operating Officer for Auckland Council, but I'm also the President of Engineering New Zealand, which represents uh, the entire profession across New Zealand with about 22,000 members. We provide engineering advice and management advice uh, to a whole range of clients, and our focus is on transportation and water and buildings and property and power. Our role is to um, essentially um, sort of manage and have oversight over one of the government's national science challenges. The key business of council is uh, quite clearly helping to provide the infrastructure and the support for Aucklanders and Auckland itself, the environment, the economy to grow and flourish and uh, be a great place to live. From my personal perspective as Chief Operating Officer, it's there about ensuring those services are delivered, but uh, planning and delivery of the infrastructure structure to support those outcomes is a really, really important part of what I do every single day. We do two things. One is we bring the in-store experience online. So if you've ever tried to buy shoes online, you'll know the main reason you probably don't do it or the biggest struggle you have is you don't know if it's going to fit. So we bring the in-store experience online. We let you virtually try on shoes. So you can scan your feet with your smartphone. And then we'll, we'll also be building AR so you can actually see what the shoe would look like. We scan the outside of the shoe and project that onto your foot so you can see exactly what it's like. We're a national company for New Zealand. We own the National Grid, the high voltage transmission system that links power from Bluff in the south to Kaikoui in the north. In direct engineering roles, around 200, but a company runs seven to 800 people. There's a lot more engineers engaged in a business in wider roles. Our company has got five people and we're all engineers. So I'm a software engineer by training, um, although my role is now to look after the business and the sales and the marketing. Of that 43,000, um, probably about two thirds would be engineers. The number of engineers in Auckland Council probably will surprise many, at least 500. And a variety of practices, whether it's in the planning or it's in the development engineering or all the infrastructure services, that's just in the parent council. If you think about Auckland Transport, Water Care and the Associated Council Controlled Organisations, if I said 1,500, I might be overestimating, but certainly over 1,000. A core of our engineers are basically in, in electrical engineers, mainly in the high power system engineers, but also quite a lot of civil engineers, we have a lot of structures. But we also have mechanical, mechatronic, systems, computer people in our IT department, so a very broad range of engineers in our business. When we look to hire graduate engineers, we're looking for a, a few key things. Uh, one is uh, resilience and an ability to take on change and adapt because we're in a very changing environment, it's very dynamic in consultancy. The second one would be a high level of self-awareness, knowing their limitations but also knowing their strengths and to, with that um, a high degree of emotional intelligence. A third one would be uh, being able to relate to people and communicate. Uh, we can't work as individuals in our firm, it's, a, it's a, all about teamwork. We fund about 200 researchers and engineers uh, throughout the country from uh, more than 29 different institutions. And so obviously technical skills are really important and having good technical skills um, is part of you know what makes a good engineer but there are other skills um, that are required you need really good human skills um, good relational skills and so one of the things that I find when we're working with our engineers is uh, often the technical skill is really strong but they haven't had a lot of experience engaging with industry engaging with non-government organizations um, engaging with Māori, for example. So I'm really, really keen to uh, support them in uh, particularly around the, the whole Māori engagement and, and Māori economy um, and how they should go about that given 
the, the huge opportunity that sits within that part of our economy. A strong academic background, so that's quite clear. Do well. Uh, but we're looking for, for young graduates, or any graduate for that matter, that has uh, demonstrated innovation, that's passionate about their communities, uh, that has leadership skills that they've developed and enhanced. And we're not looking just for people that can design a solution. We're looking for people that can help create a community and a better place, better Auckland, better New Zealand. People who are smart, who've got good grades, but also have other um, things that they bring to the table. For instance, for our grad program we look for engineers who have got leadership capabilities or showing potential for that. But what's also really important is that engineers have good communication skills, both written communication and verbal communication, um, and have good interpersonal skills. Those soft skills are very important. When we look to hire experienced engineers, and this will be engineers, say, with five to ten years experience, uh, at this stage, uh, because of our consultancy, uh, we would look ideally for them to have some consultancy experience. And what that means is uh, some commercial awareness, uh, some uh, ability to have responsibility for budgets um, and be able to price projects, be able to talk to clients and understand scope. Um, another important thing would be that they've been looking after their own professional development. Uh, within five to ten years, I'd expect that, that engineer to be chartered in their profession, uh, which is, a, which is a, a standard of, uh, of their um, competency. Uh, and I think also uh, would be, uh, again, at the five to ten years, would be networks. Uh, we're, we're, we um, rely on marketing, if you like, our people to clients. And so if they have a good network and they have a good reputation with clients, that's really helpful too. To lead uh, the conversations with our clients or our customers um, and help create solutions. So seldom have I ever come across an engineering problem that is just straightforward. Every, every engineering problem has to fit into the context, uh, whether it's environment or a social context. So we need people that can think about what the environment is they're designing into and then create the best solution. So it's going to require innovation, it's going to require uh, communication skills, it's also go, going to require that creativity that goes alongside that. As a young graduate engineer starting at Auckland Council, the, the, your role will look like you're going to have a go at many, many things. We'll take you out on sites, you'll be involved in design, project management, um, and construction, delivery of uh, many, many things. And the objective there is to grow your confidence and grow your breadth of skill and understanding what engineering actually is from a council perspective. Uh, and you will zigzag in your career over the first three, five years. You will do many, many things, uh, building that competence uh, to lead the conversation with the community, with uh, technical professionals, consultants, uh, contractors. We have really exciting roles in Transpower. We have a graduate program where grads come in and work with us on rotations for a couple of years. So they can work right across the business and do varying things. Um, one of our young, young graduates recently came in um, and has worked in projects in the field, worked with one of our service providers doing work in the field, worked planning, developing things right back in strategy, and is now, I think, working as one of the protection engineers. So there's a, a broad range and it gives grads an opportunity to experience all the different parts of our business before they decide on where they want to go and um, further their careers. The reality is, is that most of the stuff they'll encounter in our business they will be doing for the first time. Uh, and so they can expect that they'll be working in teams with, with um, uh, engineers with more experience, senior engineers, principal engineers, they'll get mentored. Uh, and then over time, they'll develop their own skills and strengths. In terms of the project work that they do, lots of variety. So it could be um, going out on site to help um, supervise a construction contract, or it could be uh, doing some modeling and data work or, uh, with some software to predict transportation flows, traffic flows, or hydraulics. Um, it could also be report writing. It could be maybe initially reviewing others' reports and then moving on to write their own reports. Uh, it could also be just, um, uh, just observing, actually, and, and just uh, shadowing senior staff uh, and, um, and working towards uh, maybe some client exposure over time, too. Mm -hmm.